Yo guys. Codemasters have often updated F122 since its launch earlier this year, and they've adjusted how the in-game physics and car setups work in the process. I've previously created a video with a car setup for every track in F122, but since all of the updates that have been applied to F122, that video is now pretty out of date. Since then, I've gone through and updated every single car setup to work better in F122 since its various patches. This video is a collation of all of those car setups so you can find them in one handy video. I'll leave timestamps in the description below so you can quickly jump to the track that you're looking for. And before we jump into the Bahrain car setup, I just wanted to ask that if you enjoy this video, please drop it a like and consider subscribing. I release daily and weekly F122 content along with sim racing product reviews and general sim racing videos. If you like this sort of thing, subscribing would really help this channel grow to be able to do more things and create more videos. But let's jump into the first car setup for Bahrain. For Bahrain, I've lowered the front and rear wing aero. I've gone 14 at the front, 16 at the rear, which is a lot lower than my original setup. Originally I had 22, 25, but the AI and their top speed was absolutely just destroying us. So we've gone pretty low downforce here. And I've also brought the front wing a little bit closer to the rear, just to reduce some of the understeer on initial corner turning. For the transmission, I've lowered the on throttle diff to 83%, just to help a little bit with acceleration from slower speed, and I've dropped the off throttle diff right down to 50, again to aid with a little bit of front end rotation on corner entry. For suspension geometry, I've got minus 2.5 on the front camber, minus one on the rear camber, and then far left on the front and rear toe. This will be a common theme for all of these updated setups, I think. Some do run a little variation on this, but Ideally, you want to run as little camber as you can. And when I say little, I mean far right on the slider, as that'll give you the most mechanical grip in a straight line when accelerating. My suspension setup hasn't seen major tweaks. I haven't flipped it and gone super soft on the front and super hard on the rear like many time trial setups are going. They might be great for time trial, but during a race, they'll create a car that's super loose and could give way on you at any moment. I did try that approach, but the car was just so unstable at high speed. Instead, I have softened the front suspension with front anti roll bar a little. I've gone six on the front suspension and three on the rear, and then seven on the front anti roll bar and three on the rear. And then I've raised the ride height of the front a little bit to four, just to give a little bit more leeway over bumps because the curbs in this game are pretty brutal. For the brake setup, I've gone 100% pressure, 50% bias. That'll be the same at pretty much every single track. And then for the tire pressures, I've gone 23.5 on both fronts and 21.8 on both rears. I think the nighttime race in Bahrain, you can get away with slightly higher tire pressures. A lot of other tracks, you're gonna to have to lower these a lot more, but the, the cooler temperatures, I mean, you can run slightly higher pressures, especially at the front. And this setup is for Saudi Arabia. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna jump straight into the setup. So looking at the aero, I've adjusted the front wing a little down to 21 and the rear wing down to 24. These in my original setup were 22 and 28. So this is a shift to a lower downforce setup, but much like our Bahrain setup, I brought the front wing and the rear wing closer together to give a little bit more emphasis on the front over the rear. I've increased the on throttle diff to 65% compared to 58 in our original setup. Traction's easier to find since the update, so we can increase the on throttle diff a little bit to give us a, a little bit more emphasis on higher cornering speeds at medium and high speed. With the off throttle diff, I've knocked that right down to 50%, just to help reduce a little bit of understeer at the front of the car. The suspension geometry setup looks pretty similar to our original setup with minus 2.7 on the front camber and then full left on the toe. But I have increased the rear camber, or I say increased, I've moved it further right, which is actually decreased in rear camber, just to help with a little bit of rear end grip and stability. The suspension setup itself is actually identical other than the ride height. I played around with adjusting this a little bit, but the all round soft suspension here just works really well and the car really felt on point and well balanced so I didn't mess around too much. But I have increased the front ride height a little just to four, just to make your car a little bit more forgiving over the curbs, which you'll be riding over a lot around Jeddah. The brake setup, 100% pressure, 50% brake bias, I'm not going to mess around too much with that. And then for the tyres, I've lowered these a lot since our original setup. The front tyre pressure is down to 23.0, all the way from 24.5 in the original setup and the rear pressures are at 21.3. These lower tire pressures are gonna be a theme with all of these setups. You really need to crank them down just to stop your tires from overheating. The threshold for where you start to lose grip is a lot lower now, much more realistic. 
So we really need to run low tire pressures to look after and manage our tires during the race. Next up on the calendar is Australia. So here is my updated car setup for Australia since patch 1.06. Thankfully, this setup felt pretty good out of the box. I really didn't need to tweak too much as my previous setup just worked pretty well just with lower tire pressures. But jumping straight in, you'll see that I have lowered the front and rear aero. I've gone 15 on the front and 19 on the rear compared to 17 and 24 in my original setup. Again, this just puts a little bit more emphasis on the front wing and it helps close in on the AI which still have ridiculous straight line speed. I've increased the on throttle diff a touch up to 74% just because we can get away with a little bit more now since the traction is easier to find. Kept off throttle at 50% and the suspension geometry is pretty unchanged as well. It's minor, minor tweak. I've kept the front camber at minus 2.6. I've moved the rear camber further right a little just to straighten the tires up gives a little bit more rear stability at minus 1.7, front toe of 0.06 and rear toe of 0.2. And then with the suspension, nothing crazy here because it felt pretty pretty darn good. Um, I've lowered the front and front suspension and front anti-roll bar touch, putting them both down to seven, kept the rear suspension at one, and I've raised the rear anti-roll bar touch up to two just to give a little bit more turning. And then I've increased the front ride height up to five, left the rear ride height also at five. Brake pressure 100% like normal, 50% bias, just like every other car setup I'm running. And then the tyres, these have seen a dramatic change. So we're down to 23.3 on the front right and 23.0 on the front left. The front left wears a little bit more, a bit more sort of emphasis on it around the lap. So I've lowered that a touch more just to bring the temperatures down. And then the rear pressures I've lowered to 21.3 on both right and left. This will help you control those tyre temperatures throughout a race. And I did. And I did test this in a full distance race and tire temp temperatures were pretty much on point the whole way through. So this seems to have fixed, fixed the super high tire temp issue that a lot of people are running into. Here we are again with another updated car setup since patch 1.06 and this time we're at Imola. And this car setup has seen some pretty dramatic changes since our original setup. And it took a little bit of time just to make this feel spot on since the new patch. So jumping straight in, the aero itself, I've lowered front and rear. This, this has been a theme across all the setups I've created so far, just to try and bring the car further in line with the crazy AI straight line speed. I've gone 16 on your front wing, 22 on the rear. So we've still got a rear focus setup, but the, the gap between front and rear has been reduced since our original setup, just to help reduce the understeer that the new handling model has kind of brought in. For the transmission, I've increased the on-throttle diff pretty dramatically, up to 75%. Again, traction is easier to find, and Imola does really benefit from a, a relatively higher on-throttle diff setup. And now I've lowered the off-throttle diff right down to 50, just to help with initial turning at sort of some of the slower corners, just to reduce some of that understeer that washes the car out wide at slower speeds. For the suspension geometry, the main thing I've adjusted is the rear of the car. I've, I've kept the front camber at minus 2.7, I've adjusted the rear camber to minus 1.5 to give a little bit more rear stability and mechanical grip. Left the front toe at 0.08 and I've reduced the rear toe as well a little bit to 0.29 just to reduce some of the drag in straight lines. I've softened up the suspension a little bit. I've reduced the front suspension to 6 um, and reduced the front anti-roll bar to 7 and then I've stiffened the rear a touch. I've stiffened the rear suspension up to 2 and stiffened the rear anti-roll bar also up to 2. If you stiffen the rear too much more, you, you will get a bit more initial turn in, but the car will feel quite loose, especially in some of the medium to higher speed corners. And I've increased the ride height of the front up to four to give a little bit more sort of leeway over bumps and curbs and kept the rear ride height also at four. Brakes are the usual setup of 100% pressure and 50% bias. And then the tires have been reduced a lot in terms of their tire pressures. The fronts down to 23.0 on both fronts and the rears I've actually kept at 21.3 from our original setup. I did test it throughout a full practice session and a full race, and it actually worked quite well. There was no overheating of the rear, so I was able to keep that at 21.3. And that'll do it for our updated Imola setup. Let me know in the comments below if this is working for you. It's a little bit um, more low downforce focused, so the car itself won't feel quite as planted through the corners as as a setup before the patch, but that's required really to stay competitive down that really long pit straight. Back again with another updated setup after patch 1.06, and this time we're at Miami. 
This setup's only featured a few small tweaks. The original setup felt pretty good, so only minor tweaks were needed. But jumping straight in, the aero itself, I've left the front wing at 14 and I've lowered the rear wing down to 20 from 24. This will help with a little bit better straight line speed and bring the balance further forwards than it was previously. I've increased the on throttle diff to 80 and I've lowered the off throttle diff to 52. This will help maintain some higher speed through the medium and higher speed corners and also get a little bit more rotation in the car at lower speeds. The suspension geometry has only seen a minor tweak, going with minus 2.8 on the front camber, minus 1.7 on the rear, and then 0.05 and 0.23 on the toe. And I've kept the suspension itself pretty on point with our original setup. I've kept the front suspension and front anti-roll bar both at 8, but I've stiffened the rear a little bit up to 2, and I've also increased the front ride height up to 4 and left the rear ride height at 5. For the brakes, I've gone 100% pressure, 50% brake bias as normal, and for the tyre pressures, I haven't lowered them as much as you'd think. I've lowered the fronts down to 23.0 and I've actually kept the rear pressures at 21.3 and this was about spot on with tyre wear and tyre temperatures during a longer race. As I said this setup felt pretty good out of the box, there wasn't too much understeer so we didn't really need to change too much. Back with another F122 setup after the 1.06 patch and this time we're at Spain and this setup is pretty different to our original one, in fact it's pretty much a completely new setup. But let's jump right in and see what I've changed. Starting with the aero, I've actually kept the front wing aero the same as the original setup at 27, and that's probably one of the only parts of this setup which is the same. The rear wing I've dropped all the way down to 33, as it was previously too rear focused, plus the lower rear wing will really help with straight line speed. For the transmission, I've gone 78% on the on throttle and I've lowered the off throttle diff to 52% to get a little bit more rotation to take away some of that understeer that's been worked in since the patch. For the suspension geometry, I've taken away some camber both front and rear, I've gone minus 2.7 and then minus 1 on the rear. And then for the front toe I've left it at 0.06 but I've taken off all of the rear toe to 0.2. This will help with both rear stability and minimising drag on the straights. And for the suspension itself we're pretty different here compared to our original setup anyway. For the suspension I've gone 4 and 2 for front and rear and then 5 and 3 on front and rear anti-roll bars. Previously in my original setup these were 9 and 1. But that super stiff approach just made the car feel so understeery and wash out wide during a lot of the faster corners. And then for the ride height, I've increased the front a little bit to allow a little bit better stability over curbs. I've gone four and four. For the brake setup, no surprise, I've gone 100% pressure, 50% bias. But then for the tyres, I have lowered them quite a bit. And I've also targeted certain tyres which were wearing faster. I've gone 23.0 on my front right tyre and 22.8 on the front left and then 21.5 on the rear right and 21.3 on the rear left. Next up for our updated setup since the 1.06 patch is Monaco. And my original setup felt extremely loose at the rear end when jumping in after the new patch. So I've mainly worked on stability fixes as understeer really isn't a big issue here. Starting with the aero, I've increased the front wing aero by two points up to 46 and I've left the rear wing at 50. I mean, you can't really go too much higher than this. If you go 50-50, the rear will just feel incredibly loose. But increasing the front wing by two points over my original setup just reduces a little more understeer. For the transmission, I've actually lowered the on throttle diff, which is different to some of my other setups since the patch. And this is just to help get traction down out of some of the corners. Like I said, this setup felt very oversteer heavy, so I've focused on stability out of corners. And then for the off throttle, I've lowered that to 50% just to get a little bit more rotation in those really slow corners such as the hairpin. I've adjusted some of the suspension geometry options, again aiming for stability. I've set the front camber to minus 2.5 and the rear camber to minus 1.1 and then the front toe to 0.08 and the rear toe to 0.35. This approach should just make the car a little bit more stable coming out of corners. For the suspension, I've softened everything all around pretty much. I've gone three on the front suspension, one on the rear, and then four on the front anti-roll bars and two on the rear. And then I've gone for a ride height of four and five, which is actually higher than my original setup. Again, just to help over those bumps, over the curbs, make the car easier to drive essentially. For the brakes, 100% brake pressure, 50% brake bias. And then for the tyres, I've lowered the front pressures a lot, down to 22.8. And then I've also lowered the rear tyre pressures just one click to 21.0. This will help keep tyre temperatures in check, which will help tyre wear during a race. I'm going to look at Baku next and give you an updated setup since the 1.06 patch. 
and this setup hasn't really changed that much but i have focused on tire temperatures to improve tire wear and help getting traction down so my transmission setup's pretty different from my original setup but starting with the aero i have increased the front wing by one click up to eight i've also lowered the rear wing to just 13 as well this will give it a little bit more front focus on our downforce setup and then as i said i've adjusted the transmission setup quite a lot from our original setup I've gone just 68 on the on throttle diff, which is actually 20% lower than our original setup, which was at 88. Much like Monaco, I found that since the new patch, my setup was extremely oversteery coming out of corners and traction was quite hard to find. So lowering the on throttle diff helps a lot with that, especially out of the slower point and squirt corners of the first and second sector. And then I've lowered the off throttle diff down to 50%. This will help reduce a little bit of understeer which has been brought in from the new patch. And then for the suspension geometry and the suspension, not too much has changed because the, the car's balance felt pretty good. So I've left the front camber at minus 2.6, rear camber minus 1.7, front toe at 0.07 and rear toe at 0.2. And then for the suspension and anti-roll bar, again untouched completely, 8 and 3 on the suspension and 7 and 2 on the anti-roll bars. But I have changed the ride height and I've actually gone higher on the front than at the rear for the first time in F122. I've increased the front ride height to five and left the rear at four. This will help with stability over some of those bigger curbs, especially through the middle sector and the castle section where you'll be kind of jumping all over curbs. For the brake pressure, 100%, brake bias, 50%. And then for the tire pressures, I've honed them in a little bit, but we haven't had to reduce them too much. I've gone 24.3 on both fronts and I've gone 21.8 on my right rear tire and 22.0 on my left rear tire. I tinkered with the tire pressures a lot and individually just to make sure that every tire was wearing at a very similar rate and surprisingly around here you didn't have to lower your tire pressures too much to actually just keep the temperatures within the working window. Canada is up next in our list of updated car setups since the 1.06 patch that recently released and I absolutely love this track. I think I nailed the setup first time around and not too much has changed. I, I was driving this track for quite a while through a full weekend and a full race distance and other than tire temperatures which needed to be adjusted a bit, this setup felt really nice. So starting with the aero, I've gone with 15 on the front and 19 on the rear which is to bring the aero a little bit more frontward just to eliminate that little bit of understeer that's crept in since the patch. And then for the transmission I've kept the on throttle diff at 77. I did play about with increasing it but I always wanted to lower it back down a little bit, so 77 felt right in that sweet spot. I have lowered the off-throttle diff though, right down to 50%, again just to help with a little bit more rotation, especially in the hairpin that leads on to the very long straight. I haven't touched the suspension geometry, I've kept it as it was in the original setup, minus 2.5 front camber, and then far left on rear camber, front toe and rear toe. And then for the suspension setup again, I haven't really touched it other than the ride height. Go with four on the front, three on the rear suspension, and then three and one on your anti-roll bars. Now I have increased the front ride height by one point, again just to help with a little bit of stability over curbs. Go with four and five on your ride height. Brake pressure, go with 100% and then 50% on the bias, like normal. And then I have lowered the tire pressures all round. I've gone 24.0 on both fronts and 21.8 on both rears. This felt good for me and eliminated some of the higher tire temperatures. But you can, if you are still struggling with tire temperatures, lower this one click more on front and rear. And that'll do it for this updated Canada setup. The next setup I'm gonna look at since the 1.06 patch is for Silverstone in Britain. This setup I've had to change a little bit from my original, mainly just to make the car a little bit more drivable and to help to get the front end to turn in a little bit better. So starting with the aero, I've increased the front wing by just one point and I've lowered the rear wing by one point over compared to our original setup. Go with 16 on the front and 22 on the rear. And then for the transmission, this is very similar to our, our original setup. I've gone 77 on the on throttle diff, which is exactly the same. And then I've just lowered the off throttle diff to 50% to help get a little bit more rotation. For the suspension geometry, I've made a few little adjustments just to help the rear of the car get a little bit more mechanical grip. I've got minus 2.6 on the front camber, minus 1.8 on the rear camber, and then 0.07 and 0.26 on the toe. These adjustments will just help the rear of the car stay a little bit more stable and planted. And they work well with the suspension setup, which I've tweaked a little bit to be a little bit more stiffer at the rear, um, to help 
introduced a little bit more oversteer into some corners, but not too much. I've gone front suspension of six, rear suspension of three, front anti-roll bar of five and rear anti-roll bar of two. And then much like our Baku setup, I've gone with a higher front ride height than I have rear. Go with five and four on your ride height. This will help keep the car stable over some curves. For the brakes, it's no surprise I've gone with 100% pressure, 50% bias. And for the tire pressures, I've had to lower these a lot. The tire temperatures around Silverstone with the original setup were just out of control since the patch. They were over 110 degrees within a lap or two. It was crazy. So I've lowered these right down, gone 23.0 on both fronts. And then I've split the rear tire pressures. I've gone 21.5 on the right rear and 21.3 on the left rear. This is just because the left rear gets a little bit more load during the lap, which increases the tire pressure compared to the right. Austria is another track that has needed some pretty drastic setup changes after the 1.06 patch that Cody's dropped. So I'm going to take a look at what I've updated in the setup, starting with the aerodynamics. I've increased the front aero by three points actually compared to the original setup. I've gone with 17 instead of 14. And I've also lowered the rear wing by a couple down to 20 instead of 22. This dramatically affects the aero balance really, brings it much further forward to eliminate a lot of that understeer wash that was happening since the patch. The transmission setup looks pretty similar to our original. I've kept the on throttle diff at 82%. You don't want to go much higher than this because you will struggle to get traction down out of the slower corners. And then I have lowered the off throttle diff to 52% instead of 55. Much like other tracks where I've done something similar, this will help get the front of the car turned in a little bit better and reduce a little bit of understeer. The suspension geometry is relatively similar to our original setup, although I've switched the front and rear camber around, lowering the front camber to minus 2.6 and increasing the rear camera to minus 1.0. I say increasing, moving further towards the right hand side, which Cody's called Max. And then I've left the toe at far left on both front and rear. For the suspension, I've made quite a few changes. I've softened pretty much the whole car. I've reduced front suspension down to one, reduced the rear suspension down to four. This inverted setup does still work very well for Austria. You don't need to flip it to go stiffer front and softer rear. Uh, the front anti-roll bar again I've lowered to 1 and I've actually increased the rear anti-roll bar to 8 to give an anti-roll bar focus setup here. And then for the ride height I've actually kept that at 3 and 4 for this setup. For the brakes I've gone 100% pressure and 50% bias like every other track in F122. And then I've had to lower the tyre pressures pretty drastically. Fast tracks such as this and Silverstone really suffer from increased tyre wear since the 1.06 patch. So I've gone all the way down to 23.3 on the front pressures and 21.8 on the rear pressures and that should bring your temperatures and tyre wear back in line with what they should be for a full race distance. Paul Ricard in France is the next track in the calendar so I am creating an updated car setup since the 1.06 patch that recently released and I've had to change my aero setup pretty drastically since the original setup. I've gone a lot more low downforce with this iteration. This will promote a little bit more speed on the straights and it also kind of balances the car a little bit better than my really heavy rear focused original setup. So I've gone 14 on the front wing and 18 on the rear wing. And then for the on throttle diff, I've actually lowered it a little bit to 80% and I've also lowered the off throttle diff a little bit to 53%. The suspension geometry is relatively similar to my original setup. I've kept, kept front camber at minus 2.7 and I've made a change on the rear camber taking it to minus 1.0 but then i've left front and rear toe as far left as they can for the suspension setup i've made a few tweaks compared to my original i've basically just softened the car all around this will kind of make the car a little bit easier to drive especially over some of the bumps i've gone a front suspension of five and a rear suspension of three and then a front anti-roll bar a little bit higher at seven and a rear anti-roll bar also at three and then I've increased the front ride height to four and lowered the rear ride height to four as well. This will create a little bit more balance and allow the car to sort of ride over curbs a little bit better and remain stable. For the brakes, I've gone 100% pressure, 50% bias as always. And for the tires, I've lowered the front pressures dramatically. They were almost as far right as they could be in my original setup. And now they're almost as far left as they can be because tire temperatures around here were just absolutely crazy. Go 23.0 on your front right and left tyre and then 21.5 on both rears and this should really help out during a long race and keep your tyre wear to a normal level.
and this one's for Hungry, which we've recently seen on TV. I've made a few setup changes to my original setup, but not too many, mainly focusing on the tire pressures, which are vastly different, and the suspension itself. But jumping straight into the aero, I've gone 45 on the front wing and 48 on the rear. So I've lowered the rear a little bit and increased the front to make the car a little bit more pointy at the front end. Then for the transmission, I've kept this the same for the on throttle diff at 66%. You don't want to go much higher because traction is very hard to find around Hungary. But then I have lowered the off throttle diff right down to 50, again to get a little bit more rotation at slower speed. The suspension geometry is exactly the same as my original setup, minus 2.5 and minus 1.8 on the camber and full left at 0.05 and 0.2 on the toe. The suspension itself, I've softened the front suspension a little bit down to 7, kept the rear suspension at 1, softened the front anti-roll bar down to 8 and increased or stiffened the rear anti-roll bar to 3. And then I've increased the ride height by a little bit up to 5 and 5 just to make riding over curbs a little bit easier. Brake pressure 100%, brake bias 50% as per normal. And then the tyre pressures I have dropped completely. In my original setup these were pretty high. Uh, but now you can see they're almost as low as they go. And I'll set individual tyre pressures for each tyre because each one kind of wears a little bit different with your left taking a bit more punishment than the right. So go 22.8 and 22.5 on your front tyres and 21.3 and 21.0 on your rears. And that'll do it for this updated Hungary setup. Back again with another F122 setup and this time we're at Spa, which will be the next track in the F1 calendar after the summer break. But jumping right into the setup, I've changed this a little bit, but not too much. Starting with the aero, I've increased the front wing by one point up to 10, and I've lowered the rear by three points down to 14. This will make the car a little bit faster in a straight line, and it'll make it a little bit more front bias than it was before previously, helping you get the front turned in. For the transmission, I've increased the on throttle dip up to 82, now that traction is a little bit easier to find. This will just help push your car through the medium and high speed corners a little bit better. And then I've kept the off throttle diff at 52%. For the suspension geometry, I've left the front camber all the way right, and then I've bumped the rear camber a couple of points right as well to make it minus 1.6. This will just help the rear of the car grip up a little bit better as you're accelerating in a straight line from the slower corners. Then for the toe, I've kept these both far left as they were in the original setup. For the suspension itself, I've softened the front suspension down to five, and I've kept the front anti-roll bar the same at 6. And then for the rear suspension, I've stiffened that up to 2. And I've stiffened the rear anti-roll bar up to 3, just to make the car more willing to turn in. And then for the ride height, I've bumped this up to 5 on both front and rear, just to help, again, ride the curbs a little bit easier, make stability a little bit better. For the brakes, I've gone 100% pressure, what 50% bias, as per normal. And then for the tyres, I've lowered these a little bit, but not too much, the pressures, just to help bring tyre temperatures back in check. I've gone 23.3 on both fronts and 21.3 on both rears. Today I'm going to take a look at the Zandvoort setup since the recent 1.06 and 1.07 patch. This tweak setup is really just focusing on stability and getting those tyre pressures down. Because if there's one thing you need around Zandvoort during a race, it's a stable and balanced car. But starting with the aero, I've adjusted the front wing up to 28 and lowered the rear wing down to 32 to make the front of the car a little bit pointier than it was before. The transmission, I've kept the on throttle diff the same at 62% because traction is still pretty hard to find around here. And then I've lowered the off throttle diff down to 52, again to make the car turn in a little bit better during the slower corners. For the suspension geometry, this is tweaked ever so slightly from my original setup. I've kept the front camber at minus 2.7, and then I've adjusted the rear camber to minus 1.3, adjusted the front toe to 0.06, and reduce the rear toe down to 0.29. For the suspension itself, I've softened the front suspension and front anti-roll bar a little bit, taking the front suspension down to 6, the front anti-roll bar down to 5, and then for the rear suspension I brought that up to 2, and left the rear anti-roll bar alone at 3. And then for the ride height I've gone 5 and 5, to make sure your car gets a little bit of clearance over some of the curbs, which are quite high around here. For the brakes, go with 100% brake pressure, 50% bias as normal, and then for the tyres, I've adjusted each tyre individually because the left side wears a lot faster than the right and it increases in temperature a lot quicker as well. So I've gone 23.0 on the right front, I've gone 22.8 on the left front, and then go 21.3 on the right rear and 20.8 on the rear left. And that'll do it for this updated setup. You can see it's 
It's been tweaked a little bit, but not massively so. And it will result in a car which is nice and stable all the way around the whole lap. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at the updated Italy setup after the really big 1.06 patch. This also works after the 1.07 patch as that really didn't change very much. Let's jump right in and look at the aero setup. First thing I did was add one click of front wing aero and I've left the rear alone. This means the front of the car will be a little bit more willing to turn in than it was before, but it also still ensures we have good straight line speed and able to hit well over 200 miles an hour. For the transmission, I've actually lowered the on throttle diff touch down to 55% just to help increase traction as it is still really hard to find, especially out of that T12 section, that really slow chicane. And then for the off throttle diff, I've bumped this right down to 50% to get a little bit more rotation in the car into those slower chicanes. For the suspension geometry, I've kept the front camber all the way right, but I've also moved rear camber all the way right as well. This will just help the rear of the car grip up a little bit better and make traction a little bit easier to find out of those slower corners. For the front toe and rear toe, I've left this all the way far left. For the suspension, I've softened things a touch at the front, going with four on both front suspension and anti-roll bar, and then I've stiffened the rear to two on the rear suspension and rear anti-roll bar. Again, that'll help the rear of the car just sort of turn in a little bit better. And then for the ride height, I've bumped the front ride height all the way out to five, and I've left the rear ride height at four. What this does is it allows the front of your car to ride the curbs a little bit better because you will be hitting curbs quite often around Italy and then go with our usual 100% brake pressure and 50% brake bias. Now for the tyres, you don't need to run overly low pressures here. I think due to the very long straights that are in between every corner, your tyres don't really have too much opportunity to sort of overheat. And plus I just wanted to create a nice little waterfall pattern with each tyre pressure being one click further to the left as you go down. But that's just by coincidence as this has actually been optimized. The left of the car takes a bit more punishment than the right, which is why the front left and rear left are both one click further to the left than the right tire pressures. So go 24.5 on your front right, 24.3 on your front left, and then 22.0 and 21.8 on your rear tire pressures. Next up, we've got a track which I really enjoy, and that's Singapore. In this video, I'll run through the updated setup, which is compatible with 1.06 patch and 1.07 as well. But jumping into the aero, and nothing has changed here. I've kept the front at 48, I've kept the rear at 50. Nothing needed to change here at all. For the transmission, again, on throttle diff unchanged at 50. You need all of the traction you can get around Singapore. So don't even think about increasing that. And then the off throttle diff, I've bumped down to 50 as well. Because this will help get the car rotated into the slow corners a little bit better. For the suspension geometry, I've kept the front camber all the way right, and I've bumped the rear camber two more clicks to the right as well just to help with the rear grip and stability a little bit better. Front toe I've kept at 0.06 just one step away from far left and then rear toe I've kept far left at 0.2. The suspension I've softened the front suspension down to three and I've increased the rear suspension up to two but then I have actually increased the front anti-roll bar up to six and increased the rear anti-roll bar up to two. And finally on the suspension, I bumped the front ride height up by one. So now front and rear ride heights are both at five. Brakes, 100% pressure, 50% bias. I'm not even gonna mess around there. And then tires, I've lowered the fronts a lot all the way down to 23.0 because during a race, they heat up very quickly and they wear quickly as well. So you need to have the tire pressure at the front quite low. And then for the rears, I've bumped them down just one click down to 21.0. They're not quite as susceptible to heating up as fast as the fronts, but they still need a little bit of protection there. And that'll do it for this updated Singapore setup. So next up, we have the updated car setup for Suzuka in Japan. And again, this is another circuit which I absolutely love. Now this updated setup, I have lightened the rear of the car a little bit. So your car will feel probably a little bit more oversteer happy than it was in the pre-update setup. But if you can control it well, it will allow you to maximize your lap time and you'll be incredibly fast around here. But looking at the aero, I've gone 28 on the front wing, which is the same as what we had before, but I've lowered the rear wing down to 31. And then for the transmission, I've kept on throttle diff the same as 60%, and I've actually lowered the off throttle diff down to 52% a little bit, for a little bit more rotation. So with the aero and transmission, we're gonna be getting the front of the car turned into corners a little bit better than with our previous setup. For the suspension geometry, I've kept the front camber at minus 2.9. I've adjusted the rear camber slightly right to minus 
then I've kept the front toe the same at 0.06 and I've actually removed some rear toe right down to 0.2. For the suspension, I've softened the front a little bit, going down to 6 instead of 8 in our previous setup. Kept the rear suspension at 2 and then I've also softened the front anti-roll bar down to 7 and I've bumped up the rear anti-roll bar up to 4. So this setup change will actually make the rear a little bit more lively and a little bit more willing to kind of not step out on you but rotate the car a little bit more. And then for the ride height, I bumped the front ride height up to five because you'll be hitting quite a few curbs around here. So you want to have a little bit of clearance, a little bit of stability over the curbs. And I've kept the rear ride height also at five. Brakes, I almost don't need to say at this point, 100% pressure, 50% brake bias. And then tires themselves, I've lowered front and rear tire pressures to help keep temperatures in check. Your tire pressures, especially through those S's at the beginning of the lap in that first sector will skyrocket your tire temperatures. So drop your front pressures all the way down to 23.0 and if you drive aggressively you may even need to drop this one more click left. But for the rear tire pressures I've also lowered them down to 21.3 as well. This gave me a pretty balanced setup throughout the whole race and I was just kind of teetering on 98, 99 degrees on the fronts during a long race stint. Back again with another F122 setup and this one is for the Circuit of the Americas in the USA. Now this setup's changed a little bit with a few tweaks across the whole setup but the main update has come to the suspension and the tyre setup. So jumping straight in, I have increased the front aero a little bit up to 18, lowered the rear down to 24 just to give a little bit more front focus. And then for the transmission, I've gone 65% on throttle and left the off throttle right down at 50% as that will give you a bit more rotation to some of the slower corners through the last or through the second to last sector. And then suspension geometry, this is very similar, all the way right on the front camber. I've adjusted the rear camber a little bit more to the right at minus 1.4 and then I've left the toe, both front and rear, all the way far left. For the suspension, I've gone 5 on the front suspension, 2 on the rear and then 8 on the front anti-roll bar and 3 on the rear anti-roll bar. This will promote a little bit more oversteer through the corners although the car will still be very stable due to the front being stiffer than the rear. And then I've gone with the ride height of 4 and 4. For the brakes go with 100% pressure and 50% bias. And then for the tyres, I've lowered these quite a lot at the front, go right down to 23.0 on both front pressures, and then 21.5 on both rears, just to keep your tyre temperatures in check. And that'll do it for this USA setup. Here we are with another F122 setup for Mexico. And this setup out of all of the ones which I've updated so far is the one that's remained the closest to the original setup that I created for this game. Driving with this setup felt very good and there wasn't too much understeer. All I really needed to adjust was the tyre temperatures and a few other minor, minor tweaks. But let's jump straight in and look at the aero. I've gone with 10 and 14 front and rear aero. This is exactly the same as the original setup. And then for the transmission, I've gone 60 and 50%. Again, exactly the same as the original setup. Suspension geometry is unchanged all the way right on the camber, all the way left on the toe. And then the suspension sees a few minor tweaks. I've gone four on the front suspension and front anti-roll bar. And then I've increased the rear suspension up to two and increased the rear anti-roll bar stiffness up to three. And then I've gone with a ride height of five and five just to help over those curbs a little bit better. Brakes, I've kept at 100% and 50%. And then tires, I have had to lower down this is where the majority of the changes come in just to keep tire temperatures in check. Go 23.5 on your front pressures and then on the right rear go 22.0 and on the left rear go 21.8. Now I've had to offset the rear tire pressures because the left rear does get a lot hotter as there's more force and load going through that tire. And that'll do it for this Mexico setup. As you can see, not too much has changed. Just a few minor tweaks to help bring tire temperatures into check, but it still drives pretty good. Back again with another F122 setup, and this time we're at Brazil. And this is another setup that didn't really need to change too much, with the majority of the work going into the suspension and tire setup. But first, let's take a look at the aero. For the front wing, go 21, and for the rear wing, go with 17, and this is unchanged. It felt really good. The front focus is what's needed around Brazil to get the front turned into all of those kind of long, slow corners. And then the transmission goes 65% and 50%. Suspension geometry all the way right on the camber, all the way left on the toe. And then for the suspension itself, go five on your front suspension, two on your rear, and then six on the front anti-roll bar and one on the rear. 
and then go with a ride height of four and four. This is a change from our original setup, making the car slightly softer at the front, slightly stiffer at the rear, and increasing the front ride height just a smidge. Then for the brakes, 100% pressure, 50% brake bias as always. And the tire pressures, we've had a lot of work going to this just to make sure that the temperatures stay down throughout the whole race. So go 22.8 on your front right pressure as that's the, that's the tire that's gonna feel the most pain throughout a race stint. And then 23.0 on the front left. And then for both rears, go 21.5. And that'll do it for our updated Brazilian car setup for F122. So let's take a look at this final track of Abu Dhabi and see what's changed with this updated setup. Starting with the aero, go 18 on your front wing, 22 on the rear, which is unchanged from my original setup. You don't want too much more front wing and you definitely don't want to take away any of the rear wing, otherwise your car will be just too unstable. For the transmission, I've gone 55% on throttle and then I've lowered the off throttle diff right down to 50% to get a little bit more rotation at slope speed. Suspension geometry, all the way right on your camber, all the way left on the tow, is kind of becoming the norm with F122 setups, especially for tracks which can handle it without increasing your tire temperatures and tire wear too much. And then for the suspension itself, again, I've softened the front and stiffened the rear a bit. Go with five on your front suspension, two on your rear, and then seven on your front anti-roll bar and four on the rear. And then I've increased the front ride height by a couple of points up to five and left the rear ride height alone at four. There were quite a few big curbs around Abu Dhabi, especially through the slower chicanes if you clip the curbs there and through the final sector. So having a little bit more front ride height is just a little bit more beneficial for stability. Go for your brakes, 100% pressure, 50% brake bias as always. And then I've tinkered with the tire pressures individually just to get the perfect setup. Go 23.0 on your front right and 23.3 on your front left. And then for the rears, I've offset these as well. Go 21.3 on your rear right and 21.5 on your rear left, or as close as you can get with your tire pressure values. The right hand side of the car will take more load throughout a race stint, increasing the temperatures on the right front and right rear, which is why I've lowered them just one click on the pressures, just to keep tire temperatures down a little bit on that right hand side. The aero is set to 18 at the front and 27 at the rear. This setup strikes a good balance between excellent rear stability and straight line speed. With this setup, I can actually gain on the AI without using DRS and DRS. Next, for the transmission, I've gone for a low on throttle diff to aid traction out of some of the slow corners such as turns 3, 5 and 11. And I've opted for 50 on the off throttle diff to reduce some of the understeer that's inherent in a rear focused aero setup. For the suspension geometry, I've gone far right on the front camber, minus 1.7 on the rear camber, 0.06 on the front toe and 0.23 on the rear toe. And again, the reason I haven't gone right, right, left, left is purely to help with stability through corners such as turns 4 and 11. For the suspension, I'm running the rear of the car as soft as I can, and the front suspension and anti-roll bars a little stiffer. Go with 4, 1, 8, 1, and then opt for 6 and 5 on the right height. You simply have to go this height to stop your car from bottoming out during some of the bigger hills and bumps in this track. Go with 100% on the brake pressure and 50% on the brake bias. Nothing new there. And then for your tyres, I found the perfect balance of performance and tyre longevity to be 23.0 and 22.8 on the front tyres and 21.3 on both rears. I've offset the front tyre pressures as the left takes a lot more punishment than the right around Portimao. China is a fan favourite track and is a circuit which is incredibly fun to drive. And I think EA and Codemasters realised how fun this track is in the F1 games, which is why they've just added it to F1 22. Now, there are a fair few tricky corner sequences, including the very long turns 1, 2, 3, and 4. These long sweeping corners make China a track that's very hard on your tyres. Your left tyres in particular are very prone to overheating. There's a pretty good mixture of high speed corners such as turns 7 and 8, along with some slower corners such as turns 6 and 14. And then there is the incredibly long back straight, where top speed is crucial if you want to have a good race. This combination of fast and slow corners along with long straights, make the Chinese track a tricky one to create a car setup for. You will always be compromising on some part of your car setup. As with most of our F122 car setups, I've created a setup that focuses on stability first. You'll need a very balanced car, as a few of the longer corners can cause you to lose control of the rear if your car isn't set up right. And just to throw another variable into the mix, the Chinese track features a few curbs that are incredibly high. This means We'll have to run an extremely unusual ride height setup to ensure we don't bottom out or damage the underfloor of the car. 
I'm gonna run through my best car setup for China in race conditions. And this setup isn't gonna be a time trial setup. Instead, it'll be a car setup that gives you a comfortable car to drive for long distances in a race. It's very drivable and stable throughout a whole lap, even when your tires are starting to wear. It ensures you have good pace and straight line speed so you aren't mugged down that long back straight. So let's jump straight in and look at the aero setup first. If you've looked at any of the time trial setups, they all typically have a higher front wing than rear. This is because in time trial, you have a lot more grip at the rear of your car than you do during a race. I've gone the other way and increased the rear downforce slightly more than the front. This will help when accelerating through the fast corners such as turns four, the S's of turns seven and eight, and when accelerating out of the long sweep in turn 13. A focus on rear downforce won't compromise your straight line speed too much, so I've gone with a setup of 19 on the front wing and 21 on the rear. If you don't mind a slightly looser car, you can switch this round and go 21 on the front and 19 on the rear, but you will have a little less rear stability and slightly better front end turning. For the transmission, I've gone low on both on and off throttle diff settings. A low on throttle diff of 57% will help you get the power down easier out of the slower corners. It's very important to get good acceleration out of turns 13 and 14, and this on throttle diff setup will help with that. For the off throttle diff, I've lowered it right down to 50%. This will help with the little extra rotation at slower speed, which offsets some of the understeer that may come from our aero setup. The suspension geometry is a pretty standard setup. I did play about with it, reducing the camber to help with tire temperatures, but this approach simply lost more lap time and didn't really recoup enough tire temperature to be worth sticking with. So I've reverted back to a right, right, left, left approach. So go with minus 2.5 and minus one on the camber and 0.05 and 0.2 on your toe setup. The suspension setup is where we really do a lot of our stability work. I've softened the suspension all round, giving you a very stable car. This will help both over curbs and with overall stability. I have run with a stiffer front suspension and ARB, which again will introduce a little understeer, but does help with stability. Go with three on the front suspension and ARB, and one on the rear suspension and ARB. Then, for the ride height, I had to raise the car right up to the roof. There are two very aggressive curbs in particular that are very hard to avoid if you're pushing hard. The curbs on the exit of turns 10 and 13 will give you all sorts of trouble if you run a low ride height. They can even cause underfloor damage to your car. For this reason, I've raised the ride height up to 10 at the front and 9 at the rear. This gives you just enough clearance over these curbs to avoid too much disruption and damage. For the brakes, you should go with our normal approach. I've set the brake pressure to 100% and the brake bias to 50% and leave it there. And then for the tyre pressures, I've had to set them incredibly low. As I mentioned, China is a tyre killer. The long sweeping corners will destroy your tyres during a race so we have to do everything we can to protect them. Reduce the front pressures as low as they'll go to 22.5 on both, and then run an offset rear tire setup of 21.0 PSI on the rear right tire and 20.8 on the rear left. The front and rear left do take the most punishment around China, so this offset approach will help mitigate that a little bit. And that will round out our car setup for China in F122. I'm so glad this track's been added to F122 as it's one of my favorites to race around. And with this car setup, you'll be able to survive and dominate in longer distance races. As always, let me know in the comments below how you find this setup, whether you like this track and what setup approach you've taken. Also smash that like button and subscribe if you want more F122, F1 Manager and Sim Racing content. But for now guys, enjoy the track, enjoy the setup and I'll see you out there.